So next week, it's my birthday. On April 2nd, I'm turning 27 years old. And whilst I'm grateful for another year and another year of health, I'm also a little sad because my dreams of becoming a pro footballer are officially dead and buried. I'm at the point now where if I'm playing career mode and I'm on a team that I'm taking over, I'm likely gonna sell myself. Whilst I'm still a young man in the grand scheme of life, I'm no longer a wonder kid. So to make myself feel a little bit better, I have modded myself into EAFC and as a birthday present to myself I'm gonna play out my career and attempt to make myself a Ballon d'Or winner and the best striker in Australian and world football history and where else would we want to start off than my hometown team the Western Sydney Wanderers my favorite A-League team the club that I am a member and have been going to since day one I'm living out a dream I'm playing striker for the Wanderers and you bet your ass if I score at home I'm jumping into the RBB so you can see up here I've got my face scanned into the game through the power of mods. I've wound back the clock. I'm an 18-year-old striker, just been signed up from the NPL, from the Sutherland Sharks. We are a 58-rated striker, and here are our statistics. For me, the first thing we need to do is get the weak foot and the skill moves up. Got to get ourselves into the best position possible to become a star striker. And I've tried to keep my stats and all that very similar to myself in real life. Six foot six, which is how tall I am in real life. Life. I've definitely been a little bit generous with myself though on the weight side of things. I mean, I'm on this summer shred right now. I'm going to the gym every day. I'm running for a half marathon. But yeah, 224 pounds is definitely quite kind. But let's get stuck into our career and see if we can win me a Ballon d'Or. And in terms of setting base potentials, of course, 58 overall, but our potential is going to be pretty moderate. I'm going to give us 74 potential, but I'm not leaving the Western Sydney Wanderers until we're ready, but also until we win an A-League title. I want to be responsible for my favorite club winning our first ever A-League title. I want that toilet seat hoisted above our arms. And I'm being selfish. I'm sorry, Marcus, but I'm releasing you, mate. It's going to be me and Brandon Borello up top for the Wanderers. Looking to make some slight additions, though, to this Wanderers side so we can try winning the A-League this year. Curtis Good, the experienced Aussie defender, joining us from Melbourne City. And Ben Garuccio is going to join us here from Western United to give us a bit of a boost at the left-back role. I mean, we definitely are the weak point of the start. 11, so I'm hoping that we can get absolutely carried and at least score a couple of goals and get some development this year. It's so trippy getting messages from myself. Had to stop things here though and watch this game. It is the first Sydney derby that I'm playing in my career. If I was playing in real life for the Wanderers, I would be up and ready for the Sydney derby months in advance. But here we go. Can we get a win against Sydney FC? We do not. Oh my God. We got subbed off in the 47th minute it as well. That is not a good omen, but given how the Sydney Derby's been going in recent history, unfortunately, it's probably pretty accurate. So we've gone up four overall in this first season, 19 years of age now, five goals and three assists. It's an all right first season. I mean, we weren't too far behind Brandon Borello. The thing I'm excited about, though, is that we were starting event essentially every game, which is nice. I mean, how are our development stats now? I assume, yeah, we've got the five-star weak foot, which we've had on complete striker. So our shooting stat finishing up the 68, which is a great great start. I'm just going to be rotating. I'll probably do the mobile striker next season. But these first few years are about just getting some goals on the board, getting our developmental stats up and winning an A-League with the Wanderers. Speaking of which, let's go check out and see how we went in the A-League. We are in a hunt here. We finished second in the league in the regular season. Tied on goal, tied on points, but losing on goal difference to Melbourne City. But we are in the postseason. We are in the playoffs. So the elimination final, we go straight through because we came second. Semi final we take down the phoenix and the victory upset city in a melbourne derby so it is the wanderers versus melbourne victory can we win an a-league title in our first season no we don't melbourne victory tony popovich's men the former wanderers coach are gonna win the a-league here in season one our job at wonderland is not done but we need to make sure we renew our contract here we're off contract only on a one-year deal let's delegate it see what we say five years is perfect. 
But we are going to be saying goodbye to some of the older players in the captain Marcelo, Oli Bazanic, and Milos Ninkovic. With Blair, I'm just letting him go. He's striking competition. He can go on to free agency. Super curious to see if our potential has gone up though in season number two. So here we are at the start of season number two. We've gone up just one in our potential, which is probably fair. Up to a 75 potential now, which means at least we're in the gold range, but we need a big season this year. We need to establish ourselves, get the Wanderers an A-League title, and then potentially think about a move abroad. And we're sparing no expenses trying to get the Wanderers the A-League title. We're putting together a sort of A-League and Australian All-Stars. Aiden Hrustic into the side, Jake Brimmer in. We've brought in Sermon from the Phoenix as well. And I had to do it, lads. It's a dream of mine. I've given myself the captain's armband. I mean, this is what I dreamt of as a kid. Let's go see if that added responsibility can get us some results on the field. Also, it's time for us to keep an eye on the Ballon d'Or. The nominees in this first season, no surprise, Vinicius, Mbappe, Haaland, and Mo Salah. Dreaming of the day when we're in that mix. We'd also love if we could get nominated for the Young Player of the Year award, but the Ballon d'Or is going to Vinicius. That was probably the one I expected the least. Also, I don't know what's going on here, but I saw that down the bottom. That is also a very good omen. Class from Jared Nance. Like we said though, lads, I'm trying to get the five-star skill moves up this year. After that, I'll probably throw us on Poacher and just figure it out as we go. Up to a 65 this year. The game is saying plus six, but we're only at plus three in this first year. Six goals, no assists. So it's very similar to last year, minus the assists. But really what I'm focused on, I guess if we've got the buffer with our potential is just making sure we get our stats up. Brandon Borello did take a lot of the shine though. And the new signings, Jake Brimmer and Aiden Hrustic are going to get more goals than us as well, which isn't great to see. At least we still have the starting spot. Maybe the captain's armband. They're too much responsibility for us. But on our quest to win an A-League title, we have won the Premier's Plate. We have won the regular season. Four points clear. Melbourne City down in fourth, but the side that beat us in the grand final last year, Melbourne Victory alive and kicking. Who are we facing in the semi-finals? It is the Jets who we absolutely demolished 4-1. Mel we almost had a replay of last year's A-League final, but Melbourne City win the Melbourne Derby this year. So it's the Wanderers versus the Melbourne City. Is it second time lucky? Are we going to win the Wanderers their first A-League title? And is, am I going to win my first career trophy? Yes, we do. We absolutely thump Melbourne City 3-0 in the A-League final. The Wanderers have won the A-League. Come on, lads. We're in a great spot right now. Captain of the Wanderers, an A-League champion, 65 overall at age 20. We've got five-star skill moves, five-star weak foot. Is it worth looking at a move to Europe or should we stay another year at the Wanderers? I'm going to figure that one out at the start of next season once we see our potential. Our potential has stayed the same. 65 overall, 75 potential. We need a big year. I'm going to stay at the Wanderers, but I'm going to have a tweak here for our third year as we go back, try to go back to back. Also, I love how the status is saying at the club since 1900. I've been at a club that didn't even exist back then in a league that is only as, it hasn't even existed before the year 2000. I want us to have all the shine up top at the striker role this season. So we're going to sell Brandon Borello to FC Copenhagen for 2.3 million pounds. We're also going to have to go in for a new goalkeeper. I didn't want this one to happen, but the release clause was met for Lawrence Thomas. So Lawrence Thomas is off to Darmstadt. And we make perhaps the biggest signing in Wanderers club history, at least in recent memory, because we brought, we have brought Matt Ryan home. Matty Ryan is coming back to the A-League. He's a wonder. He's, he should, I could see this happening. I mean, he goes for the Parramatta Eels in the NRL who play in the same stadium as the Wanderers. And realistically, if he was to come back to the A-League, I could only see him playing for the Wanderers or the Central Coast Mariners. So we've brought him in in our title defense. Matt Ryan, welcome back to the A-League, brother. And we're also going to make a massive signing. One of the best attacking threats in the A-League, Daniel Pena, the Brazilian, joining us from John Aloisi's Western United. I want him to be delivering us balls on a silver platter all season long. Expecting a huge season here. We are the target man. Let's see if we can break the double digit marker in what I'm intending to be our last season at the mighty Western Sydney Wanderers. And with the five star skill moves achieved, I am doing what I said I would. I'm throwing us on poacher. Financially as well, our market value is currently 1.3 million pounds. So let's see if we can bump that up as well and get a nice transfer fee for the Wanderers next year. Ballon d'Or nominees this year. Harland once again. Vinici okay, so the only difference is Foden's in ahead of Salah. Young player of the year. Is it no, it's not going to be us. What a 
shock. But can Vinicius go back to back? No, he can't. Haaland is going to win his first career Ballon d'Or. It's our best year of our career so far. We haven't broken double digits. Me signing Pena's absolutely crushed it. 15 goals, 8 assists for him. But at least we're heading in the right direction. We head up to a 68 overall at age 21. I think we're going to have to head across somewhere else in the world to get our career up to the next level. We finish third in the regular season here with the Wanderers. Our path to a back-to-back A-League title and our third our third grand final in a row is going to be the hardest one yet. It looks like we're going to have the victory, the team that beat us in the grand final in the first season, in the elimination finals, and they've beaten us again. The back-to-back -back dream is over. But we're in the Asian Champions League. That's a tough group, but we've made it out of the group. Could we get another? Oh my God, should we stay and try getting the Wanderers their second ever Asian Champions League? I mean, we finished ahead of Cristiano Ronaldo's Al Nassar, and we're into the quarterfinals of the Asian Champions League against Al Ittihad. I might honestly spend the first half of this year with the Wanderers to see if we can win another Asian Champions League title. I mean, I can see above us that the next game is the 25th of August in the quarterfinals. I was hoping it was going to be earlier so that we could potentially play the game and if we lose, still get a move in the summer. But it's going to have to be one or the other. So here we are, 21 years of age and our potential, it's been at 75 for the past two years and it's staying there again. 75 potential, 68 overall. Man, we're at a crossroads in our career. 21, wait, I don't want to run out of time in this. But I know I would hate myself if I was a Wanderers fan and the star striker, the kid that came up through the squad, left when you're still in the Champions League quarterfinals, I would hate them. I would be so mad. I mean, we could play the game. There's gonna, oh my God, am I gonna risk it? Am I gonna play the game against Al Etihad? And if we lose, try getting a move within the last six days. I think I have to, fellas. I think I have to. And look, if we're planning on staying and risking it for this Champions League run, I'm gonna make sure we're a strong side. We're gonna bring Mark Natter back to the club after we did lose Curtis Good and Garuccio last year. So Mark Natter coming back to the Wanderers. And the left back, Jacob Farrell, making his return to the A-League. That's crazy he joined Leon in this save. This is either the dumbest thing I've done, or this could be incredible. We're away in Saudi Arabia versus Al Ittihad. Is this going to be the last game potentially we play for the Wanderers, or will the Champions League run continue? Here we go. It continues! We've scored against Al Ittihad, and Pereiras has put the nail in the coffin. Who did they have in their side? I mean, they've still got Kante, but besides that, Al Iti had really had nobody, but we are heading to an Asian Champions League semi-final. And I mean, the transfer window closes in five days time. So I'm going to spend at least the first half of this season at the Wanderers, potentially force a move in January. Oh no, it's a second leg. Oh no, it's a second leg. And it, I didn't realize they did second legs in this. Oh my God, I thought it was just straight up. All right, second leg. And it's the day after the window closes. If we blow this, if we bottle this, I'm going to be so angry. In the Asian Champions League, two nil up. We're at home. Do not bottle at Western Sydney. Come on, Jared bag another goal mate yes we stay on did we get a goal we didn't get a goal but we are in to the next round we beat al itihad they've got jota which is maybe the guy that just joined the, the uh the the former uh celtic player but we're heading to the semi-finals confirmed and we are facing the side that we beat in the 2014 Asian Champions League final, Al Halal. They've had a little bit of a glow up since we beat Al Halal in that Champions League final. I, I always find it funny when I tell some of my mates over here in America that the Western Sydney Wonder is the team I support beat Al Halal in a Champions League final. That always blows their mind. Does this mean I'm going to get to verse Mitrovic? Oh, they don't have Mitro up there, but they've still got Neymar. They've got Malcolm and Koulibaly. I was praying that we were going to get to verse Alexander Mitrovic. But anyways, here goes nothing. First leg at home just like it was in the 2014 final. First leg in Parramatta. Can we beat Al Halal? We beat Al Halal. Neymar misses a penalty. Oh my God. We now have to go to Saudi Arabia and beat Al Halal for a spot in another Champions League final. Deep breath, fellas deep breath. The, the Wanderers have had this scenario before, taking a one goal lead into Saudi Arabia, into the King Fayed Stadium against Al Halal. Can we hang on again? Can Matt Ryan pull off an Ante Kovic-esque performance? Yes, we do. The Western Sydney Wanderers are heading to our second Asian Champions League final. Oh my God. And it looks like 
we're going to be versing Beijing in the Asian Champions League final. Just one leg for the Asian Champions League final. Can, oh, this would be the greatest. This would honestly be the greatest achievement of my, of my career. Can I, as captain of the Western Sydney Wanderers, win and lift an Asian Champions League title? All right, here we go. I'm going to channel my inner line, inner, knuckle, inner, inner Nikolai Topo Stanley for an Asian Champions League final. Oh, no! We've lost it in extra time. We lost it in the 113th minute to Beijing FC. I've gone missing. I have not got a goal in the final. Milanovic is going to get the goal. We've lost an Asian Champions League final. Oh my God. That is actually devastating. We've lost an Asian Champions League final. One day after though, the Ballon d'Or list has been revealed. Who is going to win it? It is Kylian Mbappe. Let's get to January and make our move away from the Wanderers. Man, I can't believe we lost that. Here we are on the 1st of January. We've already got six goals this season. So we're on track to have a very strong season, but we're up to 69. Fine. Financially, we're worth 1.9 mil. Our market value goes down 10%. It's time to leave, fellas. It's been a great honor being captain of the Western Sydney Wanderers, but now it's time for our next chapter. Damn, and I took that transfer listing personally. I bagged two goals the day after we get put on the transfer list. Do we want to go and play in Turkey? Bazikstas have offered us a transfer here. You know what? I'm going to go and accept that. Let's go get a move to Istanbul. I went to Istanbul two years ago and it was one of my favorite cities I've ever traveled to. It's a league where we could go straight into one of the top teams. They could develop us and really get our eyes on some big European clubs. Let's see if we can make a move to Besiktas. Ha, <laughs> that's hilarious. Al Ali. We could go to Saudi, but there's not a chance I'm going to Saudi. Will this be our final match as a Western Sydney Wanderers player? It has been a great honor. It is potentially, but we might leave with a goal next to our name. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. The move has been confirmed. We have signed on with Bazishtas. We're packing our bags, getting our visa, and heading to Turkey. That is a good omen. We've come in and we've automatically been given the number nine jersey here. We kind of suit the Bazishtas, the Bazishtas kit. We do have a little bit of striker competition ahead of us though, so in typical Jared fashion, I'm releasing this guy from his contract. And we have got a familiar face here. Yorit Hendricks, who was with us during our first season at the Wanderers, is here at Bazishtas. This team is pretty good though, fellas. We've got some fake Famous names that are going to hopefully be servicing us. Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain, Ante Rebic, and then Marashika. Hopefully these guys can just deliver for us. Only half a season here though, so it's all about just finding our footing. What a start. Oh my God. Yeah, we've found our footing. We have found our footing. We come in halfway through the season and we come equal first in the golden boot race of the club. Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain who had 51 games bags 15 goals. We get 21 games and we bag 15. If you factor that in with a nine we scored away, what do we have a nine? I think nine or 10 at the Wanderers. We've had an incredible season. I've kept us on the poacher and it's working out really well. Our finishing up to 75. Some of our stats now starting to enter the eighties. Our pace is getting up. I'm really happy with the season we had. How did we go with Bajish Das in the standings though. Oh, Galatasaray have beaten us by a point. Galatasaray, that's a tight title race. Fenerbahce almost behind, ahead of us. We come second though in the Turkish league. At least we're going to get some European football next year. We do not win the cup though. Bajish Das were in the Europa League before we joined this year, but they got zero points, which is embarrassing. We only had a year remaining on our contract though, so we're going to re-sign ourselves. Three-year deal, nice little bump up in the wage department, and most importantly, important squad role. Our first half a season at Bezish Das and in Europe was a success. Let's go see if it's affected our potential though. Ladies and gentlemen, we have growth. Our potential up to a 77. It is so bloody important though that we come out of the gate swinging to start this season. We need to hit the double digits and maybe even beyond again. We need, we're at 22 years of age now. It's not the end of the world, but I'm always very paranoid about leaving it too late. I don't want a Jamie Vardy career. I want an Erling Haaland career. And as always, fellas, I'm trying to get the best coaches available for us to give us our best chance at development. Who win the Ballon d'Or this year? Okay, Arsenal getting some players in there. They've got Saka and they've also got Rodrigo, Mbappe and Vinicius, no surprise. Who's gonna win here in 2027 though? Again, every time I see these headlines, a little bit of my childhood comes back and I get hope again. But the Ballon d'Or here in 2027, it is back to back 
for Mbappe. Come on, fellas. Look what we do with a full season at Besiktas under our belt. We get up to 74 overall, but the most exciting thing is 22 goals. We have our best career season so far. Not bothered at all about the assists. Just bothered about the goals. 23 years of age. We're making decent progress, but we're starting to turn up the dial, which is nice. Something not nice, though, is we finish fourth in the Turkish Super League. We really missed Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain this year. He retired during the offseason. And yeah, our squad went down a little bit in overall. No Turkish Cup. We went out of the Champions League in the qualifiers. Finished third in our Europa League group. Did we get Conference League? We did, but we lost to Portimonense from the Portuguese League. Genuinely tempted to see if any transfer offers, any enticing transfer offers come in for us. Because I'm not going to lie, if we get somebody from, if we get an offer from Fulham, I'm going. I'm going. I'm packing my bags. Bags are packed. We might be getting some attention though from some bigger clubs. We got the job done on the pitch in terms of our individual performance last year and now our potential goes up to 80. We're into the 80s. We're still a silver card, but our overall is just about to get us up to a 75, hopefully, with potential in the 80s. Our finishing stats are coming along brilliantly, but I want to get some of our other... I want to become a more well-rounded player. So we're going to throw ourselves on Mobile Striker this year, get the ball control, the dribbling, the long shots, all that jazz up again. And just out of curiosity, I'm not saying I'm going to accept any offers, but out of curiosity... I'm going to see who comes in for us. Ha, <laughs> Fenerbahce have come in for us. Fenerbahce come in. I mean, we could make a jump to a team that's looking better on paper in the league, but if I'm going to if I'm going to move, it's going to be to a bigger club. In terms of like I want to go honestly to a Fulham. That could be fun. Feyenoord. Oh, this is tempting, lads. I'm going to Oh my god, Feyenoord could be fun. We saw what they did with Santiago Jimenez. We've seen what they've done in the past as well with Robin van Persie. They have a history of developing strikers. Is this a sideways move? move though or is it a move in the right direction i'm gonna hold off i'm gonna no nah, i'm not i'm not gonna do it i'm not gonna do it it has to immediately jump out and make me scream let's do it yeah again gank like these ones they're slight little upgrades but i would rather stay another year at bazich das all right i take it back Literally the next day, Ajax come in for us. I know that they're not doing great this season in real life, but this feels like a no-brainer. They are a developmental factory. They're historically the biggest club in Dutch football. I've got to do it. I've got to go to Ajax. There it is, lads. It's confirmed. I am officially an Ajax player. What an honor this is. It's an honor for Australian football, and I'm hoping it is another step in the right direction. We've entered a pretty decent team here, though. We've got Chuba Akpom just ahead of us, although we've been given the squad role of important, but it looks like we're going to have to battle it out with Chuba Akpom for the starting role. This attack is insane. I'm hoping that like having Birdvine, Heilsen, and even Forbes in the attack isn't going to limit the amount of goals we can score for ourselves because I would love for us to have a great, like I would love for us to get success on the pitch, but ultimately I'm trying to build my legacy. I'm trying to win a Ballon d'Or. You know what? I'm just going to, that. I inspired myself. I'm releasing Chuba Akpom. I want that starting role. I'm being selfish. Sorry, Chuba. Who's going to win the Ballon d'Or this year. Who is it going to be? It is going to be Haaland. We're starting to get back to normal programming. Haaland and Mbappe going back to back. Just, they just keep switching out with each other. I'm always petrified when I move to a new club, but this year the anxiety and the worries have been alleviated because we've bagged 25 goals in our first year at Ajax. We're up to a 77 overall, 24 years of age, Things are going along brilliantly. 25 and 3. We beat our Bergevine in terms of the goal department. My fears of us being like undershine, undershunned by Forbes and Bergvine have been alleviated because they still have really good seasons, but I'm happy with 25 there. Putting us back on mobile striker has come along nicely as well. I really want the long shots to get a little stronger, but I'm glad to see the ball control, the dribbling, the stamina picking up as well. Oh my god, we almost go invincible at our first year at Ajax. We have walked the league, absolutely walked the league, 15 points clear, and we win our first Eredivisie title. I'm going to stay at Ajax for a while, I feel like. We win the Orange Beck of the Dutch Cup. We're really filling up the trophy cabinet. We were in the Conference League where we finished third. Did we? We didn't. Yeah, we didn't make the preliminary round. Damn. All right. That's... We need to get some work in our European football. Finishing third in the Golden Boot Race here, though, for the Eredivisie in our first year. That's a really strong start, but I want that Golden Boot. We are going to be saying goodbye to Geronimo Rulli, though, who is going to be retiring at the season's end. Seuss is going to take over that start. 
starting goalkeeper spot. Oh, I just realized when they signed us, they put a release clause on us. Oh my, all right, let's get that off there and let's get ourselves a little bit of a pay increase as well. Perfect, three more years, no release clause. Imagine if I just ended up somewhere randomly because personally, I'm excited to keep watering the ground we have built here at Ajax and really building out a legacy for the next few years. Surely our potential is gonna get jacked next year. We came into last year at an 80. Let's see what we're coming in this year. I'll take it, lads. I'll take it. I knew that it wasn't going to be anything insane when I saw the status, but our potential has gone up from an 80 to an 83. As long as it keeps pushing up and gives us significant room to grow, I'm happy because it's not likely that we go up plus four or five in a year. So as long as we have that kind of three point buffer, that's fine with me. And I'm looking to continue building out this Ajax squad. Don't want to fall down. I want us to be getting first and going almost invincible, if not invincible every year. New young defender, Kleber Cardoso, joining us from Nice. And then a Cameroonian midfielder, Carlos Baleba, joining us from Cadiz. Two big additions to the squad that are hopefully going to continue the growth and help our performances as well. So this is how the starting 11 looks heading into this season. Let's go find out who's going to win the Ballon d'Or in 2029 though. I'm not saying we're going to be nominated, but our performances are definitely the type of stats you get when you have the overall up there that get you nominated. But we're probably also too old to get the Young Player of the Year award, aren't we? 2029's Ballon d'Or and yeah, it's the it's the usual suspects. I'm ex I wouldn't say I'm excited because it creates more competition for us, but I'm I'm interested to see who the names that come up next are, like the next generation, the regens. Is it going to be Mbappe or Haaland again? It is going to be Vinicius winning his second Ballon d'Or. Just checking though, just checking. All right, yeah, it's not us. Oh, I'm conflicted, fellas. We've had a drop off. I wouldn't go as far to say it's second season syndrome because I would normally be quite happy with 17 goals. We've only gone up to a 79 though, which is a little concerning. We need to take that next jump and really get ourselves as close to our potential every year. 17 goals is okay. Carlos Forbes has absolutely crushed it 27, but he's also 86 overall. But again, I'm not gonna throw the toys out of the pram. I'm just gonna look at it next year and figure out a way that we can get back up to the 20, 30 goal marker. At least things have still gone well on the Pitch. Three losses this year, top of the Dutch league again, top of the Eredivisie. We have got our second title in two years. We're not going to go back to back in the cup. Champions League, we had a really tough group. We ended up coming third. Did we get regrouped into the Europa League? We did, where we lost to Bilbao again. We just can't get it done in European football. Losing a few players here Kai Wagner, Jacob Eng, and Van der Boomen are all leaving. But let's hope that slight dip in goals isn't going to affect our potential. I still think that's a good season in the grand scheme of things, but I've got higher expectations. That is more like it, lads. That's more like it. Our potential has gone up to an 86. Again, it's only a plus three upgrade, but this is when we get into the really good areas. 79 overall, 86 potential. I would love if we could bag 25, 30 goals this year, start to get some big attention from other big clubs and really get ourselves into the top 10 strikers in the world. 2030's nominees. Again, it's the same. I'm pretty sure we had this exact four a few years ago. Maybe they had Mbappe instead of Vinicius, but we've got Rodrigo and Saka in there again. Can one of the Arsenal lads win it this year? That is not a good... We've had only good headlines so far. That is not a good headline. All right, I'm curious to see where we're at at the end of the year. I would just love for it not to be Haaland or Vinicius. It's Rodrigo. Okay, one of the Arsenal lads gets it. Rodrigo wins the 2030 Ballon d'Or. And we're, we're not even young anymore, but I'm worried that these guys are going to just eclipse us soon and be our competition. Jan, okay, that guy's definitely Lewandowski's regen. 18 goals up to an 82. We're 26 years of age. Forbes is stealing the limelight. This guy's a stud. This guy is a stud. He gets 33, man. I'm at the position where do we, like, he's doing so well for us, but it's kind of outshining our player. Do we try to sell Forbes and then just go so that everything's being fed through us? I'm, I'm indecisive. Again, I'm just rotating between all of these different trainings every year. Look at our stats, like finishing 92, attacking position 94. We've got some insane stats, but I don't want to get it twisted. 18 goals is still really strong, but only 12 of them are in the league. We need to be getting 25, 30, 35 if we want to keep our potential getting better and better and want to get our overall growing and growing. Like we're 26 now. We're almost my exact same age in real life. Our window is near. Our window of opportunity is coming up in the next few years to win a Ballon d'Or. We need to make sure we're ready. A huge player departure though. A new captain will be crowned next year as Bergevin is going to be retiring. But with just one year remaining on our contract at Ajax, a big question has to be asked next year. 
path, whether we stay or whether we go. The domination continues domestically here though at Ajax, just three losses again, 10 points clear to get our third Eredivisie title. We pick up our second orange Becker, but the big question, how did we go in Europe? Are we gonna break some sort of curse? We got grouped. We got grouped in the Champions League. Somehow Dinamo Kiev have finished ahead of us. Okay, I think we're gonna be in the Europa League, but that's still not great. So yeah, we made it to the Europa League. We didn't get eliminated in the prelims this year. We beat Lask 4-1, round of 16. We beat Chelsea 3-1. All right, all right, quarterfinals. We beat PSG 3-2. We're into the semifinals. We're going to a Europa League final against Hoffenheim. Can we win our first European tri title? Can we win the Europa League title? No, we can't. Oh, we hate finals. We hate finals. We've lost the Asian Champions League final with Western Sydney, and now we lose the Europa League final. The world is watching, and the trend is becoming quite clear. Our potential has gone up to 89. We are on the cusp of greatness. We need to perform on the field though, to put ourselves in the conversation for Ballon d'Ors in the next few years. The debate is there. Do we wanna leave? Do we wanna try forcing a move away from Amsterdam? 51 million pounds is our current market value, but I think I'm gonna go for one more year here with Ajax. We almost had European glory last year. We're dominating in the league. We could do with one more year, just trying to get to that 30 goal marker, get ourselves up to around 84, 85, 86 overall if we're lucky, and then force a move to a European juggernaut. And we've got the money to bring in some decent players. We're going to sign a new left back here in Quinton Merlin, the Frenchman joining us from Marseille. And we're also going to sign the Macedonian attacking midfielder Elif Elmas joining us here from Brentford. Let's see how our potential final year at Ajax is going to pan out. I'm super curious to see the Ballon d'Or nominees as well because I genuinely think Forbes could get nominated. The nominees are in. Our man is not there. It's back to the scheduled programming. Haaland and Mbappe are there, Foden's there, but can Rodrigo go back to back? Again, before we even check the Ballon d'Or winner, chances run out for Nance. They said that last year we had a great season, so I don't know whether I whether I trust these headlines or not. Like they're saying, look at this one, Ajax grabs shock win against Fortuna Sittard. We've won four in a row, three in a row, three titles in a row. How is that a shock? Anyways, the Ballon d'Or winner here in 2031, it's what we come to expect, Haaland wins again. I'll take it fellas i'll take it it's back to the 20 plus goal mark we still get done by forbes we're only up to an 84 i was hoping we'd get 85 we're 27 which is what i'm about to turn but i think next year it's going to be time to leave ajax we need to go to one of the top european clubs and really crank this up normally i say x players ready for the next challenge I'm ready for my next challenge. Don't get it twisted though, lads. If Fulham come in for me, I'm going for them over a Real Madrid or a Barcelona. Oh my God, that's our worst season yet. We come third here. All right, yeah, we're definitely leaving. The, the shine is gone. The shine is gone. My job here is done. I just blow up the club and leave. At least we're going to win at least one trophy in our final season. Can we go a step further though in European football? Oh, okay. We actually top our Champions League group. All right, we top the group. Round of 16, we lose to Barcelona. Oh, at least we actually played some knockout round Champions League football with Ajax. I'll be honest, I'm worried that we're only 84 overall. I'm hoping our potential is boosted up again and got us into the 90s because it's getting a crunch time, lads. It's getting a crunch time. I don't necessarily know whether I agree with this, but our potential, I'm not complaining about it, but our potential has gone up to a 92. And you might be able to tell I've signed a bunch of strikers here as backups because I'm putting us on the transfer list. Market value of 77 million pounds. Let's go see if the juggernauts of Europe or Fulham, also a juggernaut in my eyes, want us. Oh my God. Oh my God. You can't. Okay. I just want to make this clear. As far as I know, there is not a mod where you can have a specific team come in for a specific player. Holy, oh my God. Yeah, yeah, make it happen. Make it happen. 109 million pounds. Fulham. Oh my, yeah, okay. We're going to win. A, I'm going to win a Ballon d'Or as a Fulham player. I am making it my mission to win a Ballon d'Or as a Fulham player, to win a Premier League title as a Fulham player. This is the biggest luck in the world. Holy crap.
That couldn't, that couldn't have worked out any better. Oh my, all right, please do not have this collapse. We've also got Bournemouth coming in for us. Interesting. All right, I'm rejecting that. I don't want to go to, I'm rejecting anything that comes in at this point. It's happening, lads. It's happened. It's happened. We're off to Fulham. Look at that, fellas. Fulham signed Jared Nance for 109 million pounds. I'm 84 rated. We got 96 finishing. That is a dream come true. That is genuinely a dream come true. I know it's not going to happen in real life, but you're trying to tell me at this point in my life right now, I'm a week away. I'm a couple of days away from turning 27 that I could sign for Fulham and get paid 96,000 pounds a week. Yeah, I'm taking that. And they've given me the number nine jersey as well. This is perfect. What's this full this Fulham side? Okay, there's, there's work for us to do. There are, oh my God, there's a lot of striker competition. Holy crap. All right, I'm going to cash in on these guys because we have some serious work to do if we want to become, I mean, we've got, oh, we've got, we've got work to do, but I've been in worse positions. So after putting all of the highest rated players in their positions, this is the side we have. We've definitely got a decent base to work with. But the first thing, oh, they've got, why did they even come in for us? Why did Fulham come in for us? All right, I'm putting all of these higher rated guys on the transfer list because we're cashing in and upgrading other positions. I'm basically doing a Fulham rebuild and a Jared Nance Ballon d'Or video in one. So the striker and left back clear out has work has happened here. Muniz, Simeone, Chambers all gone. We've brought in Alfonso Davies, 88 rated on a cut price deal from Tottenham. We sold Lino Hernandez to PSG and then a new center back from Liverpool, Jarl Hato, the Dutchman. Hoping these guys can make a huge difference for Fulham this year. It's definitely a bit of a risk us going here when this needs to be the prime of our career, but I just couldn't turn down an opportunity to play for Fulham, to play at the cottage, and I want to try to make this work. The 2032. Oh, okay, ads. Yeah, we're not really seeing any of the regens coming to the front, are we? At this point, normally you see a couple of regens start to dominate the Ballon d'Ors, but 2032 familiar faces and it is going to go to Haaland once again. I'm not sure how I feel about I mean 18 goals is good. I, maybe my expectations have to be tapered a little bit because we are with Fulham. We have been the top goal scorer in the squad. We're only playing in the domestic competitions as well. Maybe the fact we're playing European football with Besiktas and with Ajax had skewed our perspective but we score 18 goals this year. Wimmer with 13 and 6 assists. I'm really curious. I mean I'm curious to see we finished in the Premier League. But we are 86 overall, 28 years of age. We're a good player, but I don't know if we're in the Ballon d'Or picture, especially not with stats like that. Okay, we finish fourth in the Premier League here with Fulham. So we are in a decent position. There's definitely room for us to grow up the table and we are going to be playing Champions League football next year. Fair play as well to Leicester, coming second. Oh, Chelsea, we're two points away from getting relegated. We did make it to the quarterfinals of the FA Cup though where we lost on penalties. All in all, a decent first season with Fulham. But if we're going to want to win a Ballon d'Or, we need bigger results and we need more goals. As far as strikers go, we are now entering the prime of our career. 86 overall and the potential 92. We need to capitalize. We need to get ourselves as close to that 92 marker as possible because time isn't a luxury anymore. It's still not, it's not dire circumstances, but it's starting to get close to it. We're in the Champions League this year. We need to get this Fulham side as high rated as we can. We're getting some big time improvements here, fellas. Diogo Costa, 89 rated from Brighton, 32.6 million pounds. And then the big one as well, Asante Aldiane, Spanish right midfielder from Bournemouth, 71 million pounds. We're using that Champions League money wisely. Ballon d'Or time. And okay, there's some new faces. Maybe this is the Lewandowski region. Waziniak from Atletico Madrid is nominated alongside Haaland, Foden, and Jeremy Doku. Who's going to win the Ballon d'Or here in 2033. It is going to be Haaland. Despite the new name showing up, Haaland is still inevitable. I mean, he's 33 years of age at this point, but he's 94 overall still. He's holding that up nicely. What's Mbappe at these days? Kylian Mbappe, 34 as well. What is he looking at? He's 90 overall. Did I just see Ethan Mbappe? Has Ethan Mbappe joined FIFA now? Is he in EAFC? He is. Okay, he's in the game. We've done videos with him in the past. So Mbappe and Haaland still presences 
Still big time, guys. We need to get to their level. This is probably the most important season of our career, in my opinion. There it is, fellas. That's what we want. We've gone up only two overall again. We're up to an 88. I get that it's harder to grow at this point when you hit the higher overall. But still, man, I want more growth. I want to be in the 90s next year. 28 goals, though, is not a bad shout. Pushed us with 20 goals himself. We get four assists. That's really good to see. I'm very curious, though. Looks like we absolutely lit it up in the Champions League. So I'm curious to see how we went there. <laughs> Yes. All right. Yeah. All right. It's happened. Sweet, 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 sweet. We have won a Premier League title with Fulham. My life is just now complete. I've won an A-League with the Wanderers, and now I've won a Premier League with the Ful with Fulham. Six losses all season. We get a pretty low points total, so I'm glad to see it was a pretty bad year in the league for a lot of teams. Very even league. Chelsea, Man United, mid-table teams now, but we've won a Premier League title with Fulham. No domestic cup at this point. Oh, we lost the Carabao Cup final. Oh my god. Champions League and we've had a great group stage. We get out of the group second place behind Inter. 13 points next to our name is great to see. Can we go on a run? Round of 16. We lose to Ghent. We lost 4-3 on aggregate to Ghent. The club that I slagged off a few years ago and said they weren't big enough. Ajax won set. Did Ajax go on a run? All right, Ajax lost in the quarters, but we lose in the round of 16. We had to lose a whole wide array of players this season though, lads. So we're going to have to do a bit of stock up next year. This has been such an insane journey. And now our potential is 94. 94 potential, but a non-negotiable. We need our overall to be in the 90s this year. I don't want plus two anymore. I want plus three or plus four. And most importantly, I want a billion goals this year. It would also help our chances if we could go back to back in the Premier League with Fulham. Our stats are genuinely cooked right now though. 99 finishing, 97 sprint speed, 98 attacking positioning, shot power, 93 reactions. We're never getting tired. Oh, this is brilliant. This is brilliant. Not much for us to work on. So I'm going to go target player so we can get the heading accuracy, the balance, the jumping, the strength all up a bit. The nominees. Oh my God, we're nominated. All right, I don't know any of these. Actually, no, I know all of them except for Hugo Schneider. We are nominated for a Ballon d'Or here alongside Hugo Schneider, Carlos Ramos, and Kubo. Are we going to win the Ballon d'Or here in 2034? Who is this Hugo Schneider guy? Who is he? Striker, 25 years of age, 89 overall. That could be like Benzema's regen. We're going to be around the same overall as him. Are we going to beat Hugo Schneider? Oh my, this is huge. Show us. We've done it. We've done it, surely. Come on, lads. The cutscenes are. We're the only Fulham player nominated. We've got the gold suit on. We're going to win a Ballon d'Or as myself. What a birthday present. My ass is still fat even in this video game. That's a great touch there by the designers because I have got a dumb trunk in real life. But we have won a Ballon d'Or. What a moment, lads. What a moment. Lads, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure you click here to subscribe and click here to watch another video.